Hello everybody, my name is Graham Elwood and you are watching The Political Vigilante. You're making Gotham great again. That's right. So, Elizabeth Warren, she, <laughs> this is who she recently hired. Uh, she hired this uh, campaign surrogate. She's a racist, homophobic tweets have come to light. This just came out today, October 14th. So this woman, Ashley Marie Preston, was hired as, uh, she's a, a woman of color, she's black, she's transgender, and she did this video. I'm a big, I'm a big um, supporter of Liz Warren. She's been on TYT numerous times. And they've had her on after the debates. Took a couple of times before they actually revealed that she is a Warren surrogate, which is fine to have people that work for certain campaigns on a post-debate thing, but you got to say that up front. The mainstream media likes to hide that. They got to say it up front. So this is what's come to light. She's been super critical, this surrogate, Ashley Marie Preston, of Bernie Sanders. But here's what came to light. This is from 2010. Latino and Asian businessmen need to stop being rude and fucking disrespectful, and I know a lot to ask in California, but speak fucking English. Here's from April 2011. I love gay men, but this country clerk at Window G is a motherfucking faggot with it. His bald but rockin' jewels, acrylic nails, and silk scarves. Hashtag and shit. And there's more. I'll put the whole article in there. It shows all these offensive tweets. Very racist, homophobic. Even when she threatens violence, I'm going to whoop everyone's ass. All, like, all this, right? So she got called out on it. And she issued an apology. Let's read it. At the height of my meth addiction, eight to nine years ago, I made a series of racially insensitive and homophobic tweets. I wasn't out yet and was dealing with internalized transphobia while homeless in a neighborhood where I felt culturally inferior. Okay. I'd stay up for days on end tweeting from an impaired consciousness while shadow boxing via tweet with anyone who made me feel less than. Although these tweets were resurfaced as a political play, ah, 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 wait a minute now. Hold on. Oh, it's just, po don't say just politics. You are out there in the public record. You are going critical of Bernie Sanders. You are saying all this stuff. Don't say, oh, it's politics. No, 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 own it. Don't take, I take full responsibility. Don't, all these, they were resurfaced as a political play. No, people were like, let's find out who this person is. People, they investigate who you are. Like when I went out there and when I'm saying I, I, my home was stolen, like I went through foreclosure, if I was lying about that, the internet would have found out. I would go, oh, it was politics. No, no, it's a matter of public record, my foreclosure and bankruptcy. Look it up. Have a restraining order against my ex-girlfriend. That's a matter of public record. Look it up. If I said those things and it was clear they never happened, that would be, whoa, I'm a liar. Don't say it's just politics. I take full responsibility for my actions and deeply apologize to those I've offended or hurt. I also apologize to the in indirectly impacted by these developments. At over seven and a half years clean and sober, I've learned to make amends when I'm wrong and take complete accountability for my actions. Okay, that sounds great, but let's remember that statement. Let's remember that statement. I didn't have the education, information, mentorship, or cultural competence I have now. I'm also not strung out on drugs and have to clear out in mind today. My life in recovery has been a living amends in and of itself, and I fully intend to keep fighting on the front line for the rights of all the marginalized people, as I have proactively done over the years and present day. While I deeply regret the past, it's a poignant reminder of how far I've come in my healing growth and personal development and why maintaining my recovery is of the most importance. My life has always been an open book and I've never shied away from the details of my journey no matter how unsettling, unflattering, or exposed they make me feel. My imperfections, shortcomings, and connection to vulnerability are exactly what my platform was built on and I fully lean into the discomfort of growth. Again, I apologize for my past actions and I am thankful to those who know exactly who I am and choose to love me through this moment. And to the people who dug up those tweets, thank you. Okay. I mean that with full sincerity. This gave me the opportunity to continue evolving while clearing out the residual wreckage of my past. We can't heal what we don't reveal, but I'm prepared to delve deeper. She started taking her tweets down. Okay. 
So this, let's, I, I, right? I've been sober, <laughs> March 5th, 2002. So I respect the like, hey, going through sobriety, but don't say, wait, don't like, uh, okay, you said all these awful offensive things back when you were using meth. Okay, but now you're all about rigorous honesty, right? Right? Make amends when I'm wrong and take complete accountability for my actions. Are you gonna take accountability for this tweet from two days ago? Stop. Bernie hasn't even showed up to an LGBTQ event since the 70s, LOL. That is a just a bold-faced lie. You're lying. You either knowingly lied, so now you're, if you are working a serious 12-step recovery program, it's called rigorous honesty. We're as sick as our secrets. So you're either lying do you lie like this to your sponsor? Because if you're lying like this to your sponsor, you're going to have a relapse. I'm just here to tell you that. So, or you just didn't take the time. You just make a crazy claim and you don't even verify this. All you got to do is go on the internet and just do a search. I use ecosa.org for my search engine because I don't want to use big evil corporations. And you would find this. Just... Put into any search engine, Bernie Sanders LGBTQ event. Oh, Bernie Sanders slams homophobe Trump at Iowa LGBTQ pride event. June 9th, 2019. Watch Bernie Sanders marches in New Hampshire pride parade, attends awards dinner, June 29th of this year. So you're already lying. Your tweet from two days ago is a lie. You scrub those offensive tweets from eight, nine years ago immediately, which is like a Trump move, right? When everyone pointed out how Trump was like calling out Obama, why are we in Afghanistan? When Trump upped the troop count, he scrubbed those tweets, right? But the internet, the beautiful thing about the internet, we keep track of everything. There's receipts of everything on the internet, right? When Trump was like, why are you bombing Syria? He, those are tweets that he made about Obama. He's bombed Syria twice. Everybody called him out. He scrubbed those tweets. So she scrubbed it. You couldn't even find this or this one. 32 years before SCOTUS decision, Sanders backed gay pride march. This is from 2015. But what they're talking about is when he was mayor of Burlington, Vermont. When gay rights organizers planned Burlington's first ever Pride Parade in June 1983, two years after Sanders was elected mayor of Queen City, and they wanted to make it like an official day, like the city of Burlington was going to officially recognize it. Here's where he got some resistance. Opponents, such as Alderman Diane Gallagher, a Ward 6 Republican, questioned why the march required official recognition. 1983, a Republican, so this is the Reagan Republicans. You know who else was a Republican in 1983? Oh, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren was a Republican in 1983 when Bernie was fighting as a mayor for gay rights. Here's what he said in response to this in 1983. So again, that woman's, the surrogate's tweet, the who said he hasn't done anything since the 70s, we've proven it wrong, just three, just go on the internet. In the city of Burlington and in the state of Vermont, people have the right to exercise their lifestyle, Sanders said, in 1983. And what happened when he became mayor of Burlington and started enacting these kind of things and marching and stuff like that, He mar and, and supported this? What happened to Vermont? Oh, did everything go haywire in Vermont after Bernie got in there with his gay-loving socialism? Mayor Bernie Sanders created an 80s trans mecca in Burlington. When it was wildly unpopular politically, Sanders backed a pride parade in the LGBT community. Word got out. Burlington was a place trans Americans could be safe. Gina Tron wrote this. It first came out in 2016, and they updated it in 17. So Ashley, why are you backing Liz Warren? Back in the 80s, she was on the side of that other woman, Republican woman that was against Bernie Sanders. He created a trans mecca 
in the 80s, when Reagan was turning a blind eye to AIDS, Liz Warren had nothing to say about it. Bernie was backing this. So you really want to back Liz Warren and then go on Twitter and keep lying about it? Did they just, did the, did the Warren and the Kamala and the Hillary people and the Biden, did the corporate Democrats just go, just find me a liar? Who's willing to lie for us? And this is the identity politics. They get a black transgender woman. Oh, see, she's on, oh, that's, that shows how bad Bernie is. Really? This is his record. This is his record. It's like Ellen DeGeneres cuddling up with George W. Bush, a war criminal. But Ellen's the, the cool, hip, funny lesbian. She works for the C. She's a CIA asset. Here's another time in the 90s. Again, when Elizabeth Warren was a Republican, here's how Bernie was talking to homophobic Republicans on the floor of the Senate. Is there any shocking doubt the same people that would vote to cut Are. defense 177 billion, the same ones that would put homos in the military, the same ones that would not fund BRAC, the same Mr. ones chairman. that would not clear Mr. up? Chairman. No, I will not. Sit down, you socialist. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. The gentleman, you. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. Do we have to call the gentleman a gentleman uh, if he's not one? Mr. The committee will be in order. Mr. The Chairman. From, the gentlewoman from Colorado is recognized. Mr. And the gentleman from Vermont is recognized. Well, the gentleman from purpose? California, is he still here or did he disappear? For what purpose does the gentleman from Vermont I just, rise? I rise to speak in support of the amendment. The gentleman from Vermont. I wonder if I could question the gentleman from Colorado. The I am rising in support of the, the gentleman, amendment. The gentleman, the chair is in charge, the chair is speaking. The gentleman from Vermont has been recognized for a period of five minutes, and you may now proceed. I thank the chairman very much. I would like the opportunity if the gentleman from California would respond. Just to ask him a brief question, if I might. Now, my ears may have playing, been playing a trick on me, but I thought I heard the gentleman a moment ago say something, quote unquote, about homos in the military. Was I right in hearing that expression? Absolutely. Putting homosexuals in the military. You said something about homos in the military. Was the gentleman referring to the many thousands and thousands of gay people who have put their lives on the line in countless wars defending this country? I'm was talking, that the group of people that the gentleman was referring to? I'm talking about the military people in the military do not support That's not what we were bill. talking about. You used the word homos in the military. You have insulted thousands of men and women who have put their lives on the line. I'm talking about you and liberals like you that keep the foreign defense. Gentlemen, would, gentlemen, reclaiming my time. When Liz Warren was giving speeches at the Federalist Society, Bernie was doing that. This is how effective the ruling class uses identity politics. Can't have another white man. I'd love to see a woman as president. I'd love to see a, a, a female, a woman of color as president, provided they're actual progressives that have been fighting for stuff like this for decades. Nina Turner doesn't want to run. <laughs> I'd vote for that woman in a heartbeat. I'd lay down in traffic for her. She wants to support Bernie Sanders. Okay. So this, this, <laughs> this is just, she, she, she gets busted for her racist, homophobic tweets. A Warren, uh, Elizabeth Warren surrogate gets busted Writes an apology, says she has a meth addiction, but then two days ago she was over, she was still lying, 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 lying. She can't stop lying. I love, I see the corporate, they just love these liars. They're just liars. They just, all they know how to do is lie. And I'm sorry, as someone who's been sober for 17 years, don't play the sober card and then keep lying. Don't play the, hey, I, I did a lot of bad things when I was using and I apologize. Okay. 12 step to 12 step, you need to do another step four then. <laughs> if, you're, if you're lying about this, are you gonna make a, write an apology about this? About this blatant tweet, this tweet that you, that you completely lied about? This one? Are you, gonna are you gonna make an amends about this? 
Right, you're going to write an apology about this that happened October 11th, 2019. Bernie hasn't showed up to an LV an event since the 70s. Ashley, are you going to say this? Are you going to are you going to make an amends on this? Because I want to see an amends on this because we just showed you that you were either wrong or just blatantly lying or just deliberately not spending any time to type in Bernie Sanders LGBTQ. How long would that take to type? <laughs> Eight seconds? 10? Click return? Bloop! All these things come up? That's what he was doing. Well, Liz Warren was a Republican for Reagan, who the AIDS epidemic got so, it, it was exacerbated because Reagan didn't care. Oh, it's just this gay cancer. I, I was a kid in the 80s. I saw it go, and Reagan did not care. And these type of people, blatantly homophobic, with a big old fat R in front of their name, that's what the Republican Party was, and still is. Is there any... Thanks for watching the show. I doubt MSNBC who smears Bernie on the daily and Tulsi on the daily is gonna do stories like this. I doubt it, I really doubt it. They're not gonna call this person out and hold them accountable. Thanks for supporting the show. I don't get big corporate money. Pfizer doesn't support me. Raytheon doesn't buy ad time with me. <laughs> Exxon Mobil doesn't, doesn't underwrite this show. The Koch brothers don't underwrite this show. So I need your support. YouTube's been sticking it to me pretty hard. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. Go to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. And of course, I've got a PayPal button on my website and I've got a P.O. box. If you want to support me, one-time donations and any of those places, whatever you can do. And then come see Ron Placone and I on the road. We're coming to Australia November uh, we're doing Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, and Perth. Melbourne's almost sold out. Just so you know, hurry up. Um, Sydney's getting there. I'm getting close. So come to those shows. And then December 14th, we're doing Progressive Comedy Tour in Los Angeles at the Sycamore Tavern. And we will be releasing Progressive Comedy Tour dates for 2020 very shortly. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all your tour dates. Thank you so much. Shave your knuckles for justice.